What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another video. And in today's video, we're going to be reacting to what Rod Wood had to say in his presser for the Detroit Lions today. Also, Taylor Decker has a few things to say to Rod Wood. Plus, the Lions have signed some future contracts. So let's get it started. Hold up, before we start the video, I gotta show you guys this funny meme. I'm sorry, I have to show it to you. Someone put it in the Discord. By the way, go follow the Discord. It's for the gaming channel. So you gotta be involved with those gaming. You're gonna follow the Discord though. But they put this picture in the Discord. I'm sorry. Hold up, this is a PG. This is a PG. Uh, meme so if you're not pg you don't know look it's it's not that bad it's not bad it just has maybe one bad word either way look at this dr bob what bro i was you know what's funny when i show you on a video i was laughing so hard. i still laugh at this dr bob what what is what is, what is dr bob come on man you no know, i got a shout out dose of the uh, man because it was actually the first time i went live on youtube and uh you know guys don't know Dosa D, uh, he put out a lot of good content for the Detroit Lions. Welcome everybody to another video. Glad you guys are here and we are back with sort of another reacting video. Not really, like we're not watching the video because I already watched the video, but I took away some notes of what Rod Wood had to say. And whenever Rod Wood speaks, I, I try to listen. The reason I try to listen is because he has a very big impact on who the Lions will hire next to their head coach and general manager. So I'd like to see if I can take any away nuggets. Get a little inside scoop from what he said. Maybe he says something that he didn't mean to say. I don't know. Either way, I like to listen to what Rod Wood has to say. And uh, he gave us some solid information, some stuff that we already kind of knew. But he also gave us some new information that maybe we were pondering or we were wondering about. But he also didn't overstep and give us some deep dive information that is like, holy, you just told us that? Like, you, you told us that that's who you're hiring? Like, he didn't do that. But we do have some information on what Rob would say. But before we get into any of that, I do want to touch on the five future contracts the Lions have signed. Because if I wait till the end, you'll probably forget that we're going to talk about that. So let's just do it right now really quickly. So the Lions have signed five future contracts. Basically, these are five practice squad players for the Detroit Lions for 2020 that have an opportunity to make the 90-man roster next season. There's no guarantees. It's a minimum deal. Nice for the young guys. And this won't count against the Lions' salary until... I think free agency begins, which is in March, so it won't count yet. But the Lions have signed five future contracts. Those five guys are offensive lineman Evan Brown, who we saw activated a few times this year. Also, wide receiver Tom Kennedy, who we didn't see this year. Victor Bolden, and the other wide receiver. Okay, two interesting names. You guys probably remember them both from the offseason. Anthony Pittman, the linebacker, and Jalen Elliott, the under at the free agent from last draft, uh, the safety out of Notre Dame. I meant to say five future, not five-year contracts. So don't roast me in the comments. But the two receivers make sense. You know, Jamal Agnew, Danny Amendola, Marvin Jones, Kenny Galli, all not under contract. So who knows who's going to be back next year. So I guess that gives this give you a little bit of a safety blanket. The only guys really under contract, Quintus Cephas and Geronimo Allison. And probably expecting them to probably still be here next year. The reason Allison is still under contract is because he opted out for the COVID reason. So he's technically still on board for next season. So that is good. We have a few receivers. Well, I should say a couple receivers. So five guys, future contracts. Great. Now let's take a look at what Rod Wood had to say. All right, we're going to dive right into this. The first takeaway I have is what is Chris Spielman doing? I mean, it's just basically as simple as that. They asked him, okay, what has Chris Spielman given to you guys? And he said, in interviews, he has been great. He hasn't missed any interviews, except for the ones that he wasn't here for. But he hasn't missed any interviews. And at those interviews, what he does is he asks a lot of football questions, a lot of football knowledge type of questions. So he's basically bringing more of the football aspect of things, or the football side of things, less than the business side of things. And I think that's huge because we know that Sheila Ford Hamp and uh, Rod Wood probably don't have a lot of that. They're not really, not really I mean, I'm not going to say they're not football people, but definitely Chris Spielman, who played football, linebacker for the Lions, he, he kind of probably knows a little bit more of the on-field stuff. So it's the guy that they can ask those questions. It's the guy that can ask those questions that maybe Sheila Ford Hamp and Rod Wood wouldn't even think to ask before. So I think that's a very big benefit. Hopefully it helps out. Hopefully it helps the Lions find the right head coach and right GM. Also, they said they're not going to be waiting for a general manager to hire a head coach, as they shouldn't. They said this, if we find the head coach that we love, we will make sure we hire him because we don't want to miss out. Look, there's a lot of competition. Everybody's interviewing basically the same people. A lot of the same people are being interviewed for each team. So if the Lions find their head coach, they're not going to wait to find their GM first so that he can hire the head coach. They said all the head coaches and GMs that they've been interviewing, they've been giving out names of certain guys that they would work well with, that they've kind of pushed for. So they assume that once they hire one, it'd be pretty easy to bring the other guy in and have them work collectively, not one for another, but collectively. But the Lions won't wait for that GM to hire, as they shouldn't. Look, you can hire the head coach first. He said there's really no, I don't even know if they're going to hire. There's certain situations where you don't have to hire a general manager. I expect them to, but you don't have to. Either way, the Lions said they find a right head coach. They're going to jump on it as they should. I'd like to hear that. Difference this time around from when they brought in Bob Quinn and Matt Patricia. Well, here's one of the biggest differences. They've added more people. So Sheila Ford Hamp is now involved. He said last time it was just him and Bob Quinn when they hired Matt Patricia. Okay, that's clearly, I mean, just think about that for a second. How Does that not sound like an issue? All right. I'm going to work with a guy that wants Matt Patricia to hire 
to hire Matt Patricia, but no one else is going to be involved in it. Like, I can see how that'd be easily like, okay, yeah, let's go with Matt Patricia. Let's go with your guy. I mean, you got to have more people involved. And he said that's what they're doing this year. They have multiple people involved, as we know. Also, more candidates being interviewed, which is a must. I love that the Lions are doing this. Honestly, it probably makes it even easier at times that it's on Zoom because they said until the finalists, they're not going to do them in person. Once they get the finalists, they will. But for Zoom, I feel like that makes it kind of easy. I mean, you just, you call them up and say, like, hey, where you at? All right, let's start, let's talk for a little bit. I mean, that's perfect. They don't have to drive there. They don't need to, it's perfect. You don't need to fly there. You can just zoom it up and it's probably quick. You should definitely interview a lot more candidates than you did last time. He said, last time we hired Bob Quinn, interview like three candidates. They've already interviewed seven. Already seven, already doubled that up, plus one, and way more to come. That's how it should be, man. You got to look at what's out there. Don't just, hey, uh, okay, whatever, we'll just take him. That, that's an issue. So I love the fact that they are interviewing one more people. We've already talked about that. We know they have. Discussing who they want to hire. They always bring up culture. You're probably wondering, okay, what the heck is culture? Because because everybody's saying culture, but what does culture mean? Well, I, I can pretty much sum it up for you just pretty simple. Basically, culture is uh, the arts and other manifestation of human intellectual achievement regarded collectively. Right? So it's like art class, collective, like collect your homework. <laughs> That's the definition for culture. But I I, under, I understand it. It's just, it's kind of, I don't know. People just say it all the time and someone just needs to try to explain it. But basically the good thing is, is that clearly they're on the same page, Chris Buman and Rod Wood and those people, because they all say the same things, the culture. Uh, they also bring up leadership. They all bring up the same things. So that's good is that they're all on the same page of what they're looking for. Chris Buman kind of brings the football questions and they probably bring more of the business side of questions. So it's good. It should be a good mix there. When I think of the Lions, I, there's not really like a thing that I think of. So I guess you can say Lions don't have a culture unless, you know, people will say losing. I guess that's technically a culture. I, I Is that a culture? Losing? A, I mean, maybe. I, again, I don't think losing could be a culture because it says intellectual achievement regarded collectively achievement achievement is not losing unless you're trying to lose for a draft pick which would mean tanking is a culture which means the philadelphia eagles have a culture hey it says hey we need the lions way like okay that, that makes sense the lions way not the pager way not the this way not the that way i get that it makes a lot of sense and i completely agree with it but i also think that in terms of building something that's successful, a culture, everybody has their past ties because, you know, anybody out there, Robert Sala, he's tied to the 49ers. Eric Bieniemy, he's tied to the Chiefs. Anybody out there, he's tied to something, right? Marvin Lewis, tied to the Bengals. There's that behind him. And you can bet GMs as well, a lot of times GMs, where they came from, they're just coming from a team. They're going to look for a lot of guys that came from that team. It's what a lot of teams do because they know those people, at least right away. If those guys weren't successful at where they were, they wouldn't hopefully have gotten the job. So I think there is the Lions way and it has to be formed through the Lions, not trying to be something or not. No matter who you get, they're going to bring something with them. Unless you're bringing in a guy that's been in multiple places, then you may be talking, okay, now they're just touching on a, every different spot. But I think there's always going to be a pass that they go back to and grab, unless it's someone that's just never coached or anything before you hire them, as a, which is possible. The Lions have probably done something like that. Definitely formed from within, but it's also somewhat brought in. From, from whoever you hire because every coach can bring their own form of a culture but then it has to be grown within to like a beautiful tree because if you hire a guy that brings in a culture and then it doesn't form within because they're trying to be completely the last thing it's hard you can't be the exact same thing as someone else you got to be yourself so you can bring those ties but you also have to kind of do your own thing with some of those thoughts and some of those ideas that come with it. I think culture comes from winning. If someone has won and they come here and it's like, okay, I know how to win. You're going to bring ties from that, but you also had to be able to just take some of those ideas, not try to be the exact same thing that you were or what you learned in the past. And actually that goes back to why I want head coach experience even more, because if you've been a head coach, you're not necessarily just jumping on, Hey, this is what I saw and this is how it works. So I think it make work. It's no, I had a firsthand experience trying to make this thing work. So it is my own way, but it also has ties to the past. I, I don't know. I'm confusing everybody. They hire someone, they're going to want someone with experience at the head coach or that can project project what it would be like to be a head coach from that other role, probably being a coordinator. Experience as a head coach is not a requirement, but it is a factor. That is what we heard Rod would say last time we got to hear from him. Not this time, but last time. But this time he says, hey, we're going to hire someone with experience or we're going to look at guys that project that head coaching experience as the other job as a coordinator or something like that. So I don't know how easy it would be to project that. I don't know what they're looking for. Like, Okay, how do you think it would go as a head coach? I'm not exactly sure. This is my favorite thing that I took away from Rod Wood. I almost started clapping at, I, was, I almost started clapping watching the video. He said this, and I actually said to my head, yes. He said this, the coach and GM, because they asked him, they asked, hey, what, were you, would you rather rebuild or retool? I mean, rebuild, retool, what, what does that even mean? Is rebuild just simply, hey, we're training Matthew Stafford? Is that what you mean by rebuild? I think that's what they mean. This is how he answered the question. I think he answered it perfectly. The coach and general manager will matter a lot more, a lot more. 
Yes, Rodwood. Yes, you're right on it. That, that's exactly what it's going to be. The next hiring of your coach, the next hiring of your general manager will matter a lot more than the draft and the free agency, because none of that's going to matter if you don't got the right guys at the top. You can have the first pick in every single round, but if you got the wrong guys making those decisions, you're not going to win anyways. You're just going to be trash. You're going to be hot trash no matter what. If you got the right guys, you got the perfect fit at GM, head coach, maybe just head coach, I don't know. Then the draft pick, those kind of things, you start to make it work. You find a way. Things get better. Certain players look better. They're on the right system. They feel comfortable. That kind of thing. He's exactly right that that does matter a lot more. And this is why it's such an important hiring. Come on. Come on, Rod. Give me something good. I need to calm down. Brought up John Schneider. He didn't kind of buy it as, hey, yeah, we are doing that. He was said this. I'm not going to get into a guy that's one under contract, but also because there's a lot of rumors out there. Again, now I've heard it again from Rod Wood, the way that he explained it and what we heard from John Schneider, his quote on the lines pursuing him, it doesn't seem like anything's going to happen there. Maybe they'll interview him in the future. It says to be determined. I don't know if they're going to do it or not, but it does not seem as of now that there's much likelihood at all that this will actually happen because from John Schneider's side of things, he basically said, hey, we're good. No, we like it here. We're good. We like it in Seattle. And then Rod Wood's like, you know what? There's a lot of rumors out there. So again, it just doesn't seem like it's going to happen. There's a lot of rumors. He also said, I don't know where they come from. I don't either, to be honest with you. I think people just make stuff up and they throw it out there. Or they look at like something that, and they try to make it mean something that it really doesn't. Like, oh, hey, this head coach, he went to the coffee shop. Oh, snap. Hey, this dude likes coffee. The Lions like coffee. He's going to be Golden Lions. Like, wait, hold up. What are you talking about? That doesn't make any sense. The Lions like coffee for real. Like, I like coffee. Should... I don't even like coffee, so I don't, I lied. You know what I'm saying, though? Like, what are you talking about? I want to Taylor Decker. Now, Taylor Decker said he's got a few things to say to Rod Wood. He's got, he got a few talking points for Rod Wood. And he said this. He will lobby for Matthew Stafford. Quickly touch on the Matthew Stafford situation as Taylor Decker has now lobbied for him. Daryl Bevel did as well, saying you go to a championship with him and he would like him as his quarterback. We also know a lot of players have said they want to play on a contender. They want, don't want a free full rebuild, which in my opinion, rebuild just means trading Matthew Stafford away. Oh, Meinke or Meinke, I, I think it's Meinke. That's how you say his name. He works with M Live said this from folks around Allen Park. I guess he says it's just a gut feeling. This is what he says. The more I listen to folks around Allen Park, the more likely I think it is Matthew Stafford returns. Everything's on the table, and he could certainly be somewhere else. The decision is a long way from being made. Just a gut feeling. So he has the feeling that Matthew will remain in Detroit, and I think a lot of people are pushing for that right now in Detroit. The, I think the biggest question will be, well, who comes in next? Because not only because Sheila Ford Ham said that's who's going to make the decision, but also I think it's how much Matthew Stafford's going to buy into and believe in what those guys want to do. Or whoever does come in next, assuming it's not going to be Daryl Bevel, because if Bevel comes back, Stafford's going to be here, just plain and simple. I think that's a no-brainer. But if he's not here, then I think it's okay matthew who said in his presser i got two years left under my contract they didn't give anything away in this press conference that's why we didn't talk about it but i think the big real question will be okay how does he believe those next guys coming in right then he'll make that decision because into what they're saying then maybe he's more up to say hey, yeah you know I, i'd like to spend my last two years of my contract because i fully i really believe i really believe that about a 90 percent chance that matthew stafford tells whoever here is next that he would like to stay here, Matthew will be here. Maybe more 95% chance. Yes, there is that chance that he said he wants to be here and the coaches still move on from him to, you know, maybe buy them some extra time because they want to move on. Maybe they get a deal they just can't refuse. But I think 95% of me feels like if Matthew Stafford says that he wants to stay here and he wants to work for whoever is here next, that he'll be here next season. Okay. He also said that there are certain guys in this organization that he would like to keep. He's been here now for, what, five years? We know he just got that extension. He played his best season of his career. I mean, I was looking at some of his numbers. I don't have them right, right on top of my head. I don't know if I had the numbers right here. His numbers from this past season were really, really good. The dude played over a 1,000 snaps, allowed only two sacks, six penalties. His, If you want PFF, oh, man, those grades are insanely good. They're really, really good. Well over 80. So definitely his best year for Taylor Decker. He got paid, and he played well. You got to give him credit for that. And look, everybody else was missing games. I don't think he missed a game. I don't think he did. Taylor Decker was really, really good for us this season. So, you know, he's going to have a say. Is the Lions going to make their final decision on that? No. Now, what did Taylor tell him? Well, Taylor, again, he, he lobbied for Matthew Stafford. He also said there's some more guys in this organization I would like to keep. Is that Matthew? Is that a different head coach? Is he talking about Bevel? Who is he talking about there? Maybe it's the offense offensive line coach. I don't know. There's some support for Urban Meyer saying that Urban Meyer was great with Ohio State. He did a lot to develop me to get where I am today. Of course, you know, he's good. For, that's what happens, man. If, you, if you've been somewhere, you worked with somebody and you like them, a lot of these guys are going to push for them. We have guys pushing for Eric Bianami. We have guys pushing for Sala, even Michigan legislators, whatever. We have Taylor Decker pushing for Urban Meyer. That's how it's going to happen. That, that's just what's going to happen there. So I don't know what exactly says Rod Wood, but again, I like the fact that Rod Wood says the door is open as it should be. And also the fact that these players are willing to speak up and say something. Hey, 
Look, I know I'm not the GM or head coach here, but let's be real. Like, I'm a player of this team. The players do have a voice. I mean, they should have a voice. If the players don't have a voice, you have, you have a messed up situation. Someone said it best. Like, when you own an organization, you listen to your employees. Do you make every decision based on what they say? No. But you can listen to them. You listen to what they have to say because they're the employees. Like, they're the people that are doing the dirty work. You build this head coach, GM, you draft these players. So then the play on the field. So you got to listen to the players a little bit. You got to have that open door, open mind to hear what they're saying. So I think that is great that Taylor Decker is taking that initiative. He has some things to say. He says, look, I'm part of this organization. He signed that extension. He has some things to say. All right, so hey, Taylor Deck, I see you, man. Go out there and get that. That's kind of where we're at right now. We know the schedule. I can throw that up on the screen right now. That's the schedule for the week. We'll probably get more information. Guys, there's a lot of rumors out there. All right, so stay away from the room. All right, no, you can enjoy it. Rumors are fun. They're actually very fun. But I'm doing my best to try to take a look and see if, hey, if it's a rumor, let me see if it pops up on multiple sources. If I can find multiple sources, we'll talk about it. If it's one source... I'm probably going to wait a little bit just to see how legitimate it is because we've seen a lot of different guys try to do a lot of different rumors for like a day and then it just dies off. And it's like, okay, yeah, that someone just made something up. Like we talk about, I don't know how they do it, but they do it. All right. That's what Rodwood had to say. I liked it. I thought it was a lot of good. Uh, the whole Calvin Johnson thing, hopefully that relationship gets better because it just seems like an absolute mess right now. He didn't really address it that well. He kind of just said, well, you know, we're trying to fix it. He needs to do his part two. I guess Calvin wasn't happy about it. Either way, I hopefully that gets fixed. Calvin is an absolute legend of this franchise. That needs That's something that needs to be fixed. That's something that needs to be absolutely fixed. So we'll see what happens. But until next time, thank you for watching. Let me know your thoughts, comments below. And I'm out.